Hey, I wanted to just congratulate you on the acquisition of your GTC Dominator kit and uh, you're getting ready to watch the uh, video of life of uh, the fun it takes to put these cars together. The first car was a little more work. It was all steel. We did it in three weeks. A lot of overnighters showed up at the Nissan Test Center, won the race for Ford Motor Company. It was a car for a dollar. Uh, cost a lot more than a dollar to build it. Then we built the GTBs. Uh, it took us a period of years to get this concept uh, from my mind and uh, Robert Allen's uh, pen drawings to the final product. Your GTC, of course, is uh, another generation of uh, perfection, uh, we feel. It's a really great kit and fits better, and uh, you should have a lot of fun installing it. It should give you all supercar performance you ever wanted, and uh, good luck with it. Take a professional opinion of uh, how to maximize the power, whether you contact us and need, your, need help, or whether you've got your own local services and engineering. Good luck, and uh, JBA is here for you, JBA Speed Shop, thanks. Today we're going to do a quick install video on a full GTC body kit. So first and foremost, what we're going to do is remove your fender, your headlights and your corner lights. So you're going to keep all your factory hardware as you're going to use that again on the new GTC fenders. Um, here, the only place you're going to need the provided hardware that, that we, uh, we provide with the kit is to hold the valence to the front fender. That's going to take two bolts, and then the rest along here along the hood is going to use all factory hardware and down the bottom. This is our Dominator GTC driver front fender. Going to do a little walk around on it. Um, obviously, here's the full fender. This is where the GTC logo emblem will go. This has two marked holes as well that you'll have to drill out for the, the emblem. And then we'll go along here where the, uh, the hood lines up. Obviously, we already have it drilled. But these are pre-marked. They are a slotted mark on them. Um, if you want to slot them how they are from the factory or just drill a single hole, obviously if you slot them, it's gonna be a little easier to, to, to fit and install. When you slot them like that, we recommend using a, a bigger washer. I think the ones from factory come with a pretty big washer, which is probably more than enough. Uh, back here as well, there's another, you can see right here, it's slotted as well as a, as a pre-marked uh, hole. Down here, this is, that all stays the same. If we come over here to the front, where the headlight and the grill come together. These are all pre-marked as well. Um, obviously we already drilled them, but you can, you can see where they need to go. And this right here is actually slotted for a guide off the front, the front bumper. But other than that, that's your, your complete fender. Oh, and down here as well, pre-marked. And obviously this one's already drilled, but one other attachment point. Um, you will need to, down here, you can see we, we've already lined these up with three, three screws, but those will get drilled out and get a bigger nut and bolt put through it to attach the front bumper to the fender. So here's your pre-drilled holes. The last one right here. Here inside the wheel well, we have the four bolts that come through from the front core support and bumper. Those will use your, your factory supplied nuts that go on there. So now that we got the, the fender on and these bolts in, we snug them up, not super tight, but just enough to where we can still move around if we need to. And you're going to lower the hood and check fit before you move forward. Obviously this gap right here is going to be a little bigger than we'd like for it to be. As you're installing these fenders, you're going to have to lower and open the hood a few times just so you can work with the fiberglass. Like I said, fiberglass is never going to be perfect and it's gonna take some, some massaging to get it to where the lines are, are pretty straight. As you can see now, we close that gap up real nice and it's consistent from front to back. So as you guys can see, we had a little bit of an alignment issue with the hood and the fender. So what we did was we took the, the factory bolts out and opened the hole up a little bit more so we had some adjustment to move the fender in and shift it in towards the hood to get it to line up and be where it needed to be. Um, the biggest thing with fiberglass is patience, you know? Um, 
it with with some with some with some patience and uh, a little bit of work, you guys can make these fenders fit almost as perfect as, as the factory stuff. And even uh, the fiberglass has some flexing to where you can move the fender more than you would with a factory metal fender, and uh, achieve some better lines. So just be patient, and uh, everything will work out and fit real nice. So what you're gonna do is drill out that slotted section on the fender, and that makes it a lot easier for adjustment to the door. So you need to open the door on this side and put your bolt in. You're gonna need an extension for this one, for further the longest one you, you probably got. Fish is in inside right there. When installing the extenders, you're gonna to wanna to start at the front. Get all this lined up and get the hood lined up first. Make sure the hood closes real nice and you're happy with that gap and slowly start moving back from there. So what we did here is we got this lined up, we're happy with it. We got this bolt put in and got it as snugged up until where we're happy with all the gaps here, everything looks good. And then you're slowly moved back down to here and we have one tab to go down on the bottom. So on this car here, it has a frame stiffener on it, so it doesn't have the factory hardware anymore. This is what this car had, so we're gonna put back in there. But you're gonna put this nut bolt all the way through. And sometimes, especially on these on these foxes, you're gonna have issues with uh, this bottom pinch weld to where it might need to be shimmed to get the fender to line up with the door. This car has actually been really good for us so far. Mine's are real nice, we're gonna need me. But with fiberglass, you might need a couple of shims here to get this spaced out so when you open the door, the, the door does not hit the fender. So you're gonna install these four nuts right here and snug them up with your 10 millimeter. When you're tightening the fiberglass down, you might hear some cracking. Most likely it's just gel coat cracking. Um, you can actually tighten these down pretty tight and, and they'll, they'll withstand. This is honestly probably the only part of this whole install, this kit, to where we recommend, we highly recommend you take it to professional or someone that does fab work or metal work. Because um, this wheel well does have to be opened up to allow for the GTC fender to go in. And most of these guys are already doing that if you're running a bigger tire and a lowered suspension on coilovers. But uh, pretty much we open the wheel well up and then we relief cut the inner wheel well so we can pull that up and out to line back up to the existing sheet metal that we opened up. And it gets welded in place and then it gets a silicone or a body seal put back inside. So here we have the rear quarter panel for the GTC. This is the driver's side. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty simple panel. Here we have the, the three studs that are, are incorporated into this fiberglass panel. We're gonna take a look at a few things here. We have this front flange that comes along, along the door. As you can see here, it has this, this return flange that may have to be trimmed out depending on your car. We leave this here for, for mold purposes. It makes the, the part a little stronger. And same on the rear, you can see we, we marked this already where we had to, we're gonna have to, to uh, dremel this out. We're gonna go back down to here where we jumbled out and you can see how nice this lines up with the, the factory bumper. For the sake of this install video, we already have all the interior removed of this car, um, but you will need to remove all the interior paneling to be able to access these the bolts for this rear quarter panel that's being installed. Here's a quick showing of how to install the nut skirts to attach your side skirts. You'll need a nut riveter, a drill, a reamer, and preferred a center punch tool. Using the center punch tool, you can mark where you will drill your hole. Then using a drill bit about the same size as your riv nut, careful not to drill too large a hole as you will not get a snug fit. Once drilled, you can clean up your hole and creep up on just the right size for the riv nut using the reamer for a snug secure fit. Take your time here as it's important to get that fit just right to maximize the grip distance of your rib nuts. Then using your nut riveter tool, you can thread in and apply necessary pressure to secure the rib nut in place. Threading back out counterclockwise, your rib nut is installed and you're ready to attach your side skirts. So as you can see here, we have our four nut rivets 
installed on this rocker panel. And if you get close, you can see we marked it with the black sharpie on the, on the top side of it. So we can, when we line up our side skirt, we can see where the holes are and mark that on the side skirt to uh, dremel out the holes to bolt it up. Here we have the side skirt again off the driver's side. Um, as you can see, we have it marked here with black sharpie on the four holes for the nut certs. And that was a reason for leaving the black sharpie line on the top side so you can see where the, the nut cert is and easier for marking. So we'll get going on these and, and dremel these out and leave them slotted to make it a little easier for the install. If you come over here, we're gonna drill two holes. This is completely up to you guys where you wanna drill them. We did them here so we have enough room on the inside to get in with a nut and bolt. But we're gonna drill these first on the back side and on the front side here. And that will be our guide to when we drill into the, the fender on the front and then the rear quarter panel on the rear. So on this lower side skirt, we drilled the two holes for the bolts that go up to the quarter panel. Now would be a good time, as you have this mocked up here, to go ahead and mark the holes with a, with a pen or sharpie or marker to the upper quarter panel. Now with the two holes that you drilled in the side skirt, you're gonna line this up with the front fender, hold it in place where it needs to be mocked up to, and mark the two holes. get in here and put the nut and bolt in here, but we just went ahead and turned it and gives it enough space to get in here. So we're moving on to the rear bumper now. As you can see, we have our three holes that are slotted down here that allow for the install to make it a little bit easier. And we'll head, go ahead and get this thing fitted up for you guys. use our clamps over here to clamp it to the rear quarter panel. So here you're going to do the same process as up for the side skirts. Drill two holes, mark them, drill them, and put your hardware through them. So and for back here, you have the three studs in the back bumper. You're going to have to crawl into the car and uh, attach the provided hardware to get it snug up to fit real nice. As we put that first nut on, you can see how nice and snugged up it is to the factory bumper. That's where right here, we still have a gap, but as we can put the, the nuts in, It'll snug up real nice. Now we've got all three nuts on. You can see how nice that this lines up to the factory bumper. This front bumper hasn't had any holes made in it yet for this front bumper, so you can kind of see what we're doing here. We mock the bumper up as close as we can. We go ahead and mark it with a Sharpie and start drilling. So now that we've got the front bumper on, we line it up here with the fender until you're happy with it, and mark it and drill two holes. So a little tip when installing this bumper, you're gonna have to leave the holes on the actual bumper itself, the plastic bumper, leave them slotted so you have enough movement to get it around the radius of the bumper to line up correctly around these corners on both sides. That way it'll line up and still match up with the fender. So this bed side is obviously for the passenger side. This is your, your fuel filler door. And we're gonna show you guys how to install this today. So here we have the passenger side uh, quarter panel. And as you can see here, this has uh, pre-marked holes of where you need to drill to allow for the bolts for the fuel door. We're just gonna do a quick little mock-up so you guys can see. Obviously these are threaded. 
Let's just close in like this and drill your holes. Once you have it snugged up, give her a test close. Thank you guys for stopping by. We'll go over the, the finishing touches of this thing. As you can see, we got the front fender installed, front valence piece installed, side skirts, rear quarter panel, and rear bumper is all installed. Um, like we said before, we strong, strongly recommend it gets installed by either professional or fabricator or body shop. Like I said, there, there is some work that needs to be done in the back that involves cutting and some welding. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Remove, replace, and some minor drilling and trimming. And yeah, it should, uh, it's a pretty, pretty straightforward kit. Uh, if you have any questions, just give us a call and we'll more than happy to help you uh, get this thing fitted up.